everybody. Welcome to the Minimalist Podcast, where we discuss what it means to live a meaningful life with less. My name is Joshua Fields Milburn. And I'm Ryan Nicodemus. And together, we are the Minimalists. We have made more progress in recent years than any other time in human history. Automobiles, planes, smartphones, antibiotics, comfortable shoes. The list of progress is endless. But have some of these so-called advancements disconnected us from our humanity? Have our achievements actually caused us more suffering? I rarely make brazen claims, but today on the public podcast, we're talking about something that has personally changed my life. We're talking about earthing. We're talking about grounding with our new friend, Clint Ober. He's the author of this book. It's called Earthing, and the subtitle is The Most Important Discovery Ever. Mm. Now, I'll hold this up if you're watching on YouTube. Clint, thank you for being here today. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and share. It's awesome to be here. And yeah, as your subtitle says, it is the most important health discovery. It's it's amazing. I can't wait to dive into it. I thought that was hyperbole when I first read it. I was like, oh, no. What do, <laughs> what do you mean? How could earthing what is our thing? Yeah. We're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about a lot. Also, this Thursday on the Minimalist Private Podcast, Ryan, Clint, and I, we're going to talk about harmful EMFs. We're going to talk about the damage caused by disconnection. We'll dive deep into Clint's personal story with grounding and health issues. And we're going to talk about alternative healing practices that have helped people who haven't found relief from traditional medicine. You can check that out at patreon.com slash The Minimalist. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free because advertisements suck. Now, Clint, let me just start here. Okay. Man, few things have changed my life like Earthing has. One year ago, this month, I was looking for something to help with some pain, some autoimmune related pain. I tried a bunch of different things. Some things helped a little bit. Sometimes it was like putting a band aid on a bullet hole. Right. Mm. And then I stumbled across grounding. And I stumbled across you and your work and you made this great film, this movie about earthing. And I was like, I, this seems a little crazy, but I've got to, I got to check this out. Mm. I want to start the episode by saying none of this is medical advice. Consult your doctor. There's some information that we're going to be sharing with you today, but uh, we're not giving you any advice here. But of course, longtime listeners of the podcast know Ryan and I are not in the advice business. Mm. Anyway, let's start with a question here. A question from one of our Patreon supporters, Tanya, has a question for us. What is the science behind grounding? And how can I explain it to my husband who dislikes anything he perceives as hippie, woo-woo, or spiritual? <laughs> Sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the number one question because even I, who have benefited so much from earthing, I have trouble explaining it in a way that doesn't seem absolutely insane. But yeah. thankfully, we have Clint Ober here oh, yeah. who wrote this book with the medical doctor and, and Martin Zucker. And, and so there's a lot of science in the book. But what is the science behind grounding? How do I explain it to a layperson, Clint? Well, <clears throat> I've spent 23 years trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still very challenged. Um, but the thing I've learned over the years is the only way you can really explain what grounding, I can explain it technically, it's very simple. The earth has a negative charge. And that's why we ground everything electrical to the earth in order to maintain electrical stability. The human body is the most electrical thing in our environment. And it, um, and it used to be naturally grounded to the earth before the 60s when we invented rubber sole shoes. But everything in the body uh, needs to, I mean, we need to be grounded and for electrical stability and primarily our immune system. But it takes a little bit to explain that. And most people don't want to learn the tech. They don't want to learn the science. They just say, if this works, um, give, me, give me two. I need one for me and one for my mom. <laughs> um, but basically what I have learned is I started out grounding people one at a time. 23 years ago, mm. and then sometimes 100 at a time, sometimes 300, 500, 800. Uh, the longevity conferences with David Wolf, we would ground up to 1,500 people mm. at a time. But by grounding people and letting them experience it for a half hour or an hour or three days during a seminar, 
Uh, it's life-changing, and people get up and say, why didn't somebody tell me about this? Mm. And it's really a challenge. So it's really the best way to understand grounding is to look at the earthing movie because there is a body of evidence that speaks to most women, mm. moms, and caregivers. And then go outdoors, take a chair, put your take your shoes off, put, your, put the chair outdoors on the grass, put your feet on the grass, or just sit on the grass with your hands and your feet and experience grounding. Yeah. If you have inflammation and pain in your body, if you have pain in your body, you have inflammation. You can't have pain without inflammation. So what grounding does is it reduces the inflammation in your body. There's a whole science behind it. Mm -hmm. There's 20 peer-reviewed published studies on it. Uh, you have the earthing movie. There's a plethora of material out there. Mm -hmm. But it's really as simple as going outdoors and doing your own study putting your bare feet on the earth, putting your hands on the earth and notice the difference. Or go to the beach for a few hours. Yeah. And notice how you feel after you. <laughs> I, like after I go surfing, like, I mean, I'm tired, but I always feel more relaxed when, exactly. I, when I get out of the ocean for sure. So, but but it's really, it's, it's all about, we used to be naturally grounded. All animals who live in nature, they are naturally grounded. They don't suffer cardiovascular disease, lupus, MS, autism, mm. and cancer and all of these modern health disorders. Yet the animals who live indoors with their owners, they all suffer the same mm. health disorders as their owners, meaning 50% of them die from cancer just like their owners. But cancer rarely exists, if at all, in nature. Mm. So is it, we've disconnected from this energetic source that maintains the electrical stability of the body and primarily the immune system. Yeah. So so you could, you know, scientifically talk about like the charge that the body holds and how this mm -hmm. basically creates a perfect environment for inflammation to to persist and how grounding can kind of take out that uh, that electric charge. But really what I hear you saying, Clint, is seeing is believing. And that's how yes. most of us really are. Yes. Try it out for ourselves to actually yeah. see how it works. Yeah, you got to do your own research. Yeah. But it's free. Yeah. And it's enjoyable. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, I totally. And so when I first heard about this, I'm like, okay, let me, I'm, I'm in so much pain at the time, not anymore. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Clint and mm -hmm. thanks to earthing. Thanks mm -hmm. to mother earth in general. He, he just helped yeah. connect me, reconnect yeah. me to the earth. Yeah. And what I realized is, oh, I'm 40 now. I've been disconnected. For, even as I was pictures of me as a baby learning to walk with shoes on. Yeah. yeah. I have been so disconnected from the earth mm. and I didn't realize that I was an electric electrical being. I don't know a whole lot about biology. I don't know a whole lot about electricity. I don't know a whole lot about earth and electrons and negative charge versus positive charge. I know yeah. a lot now because I read earthing and what earthing did for me is it made it real. Not only are there real life stories in your book of real life people who have healed mm -hmm. It convinced me enough without trying to convince me. It convinced me of seeing these other people. Yep. It's at least worth trying. Yeah. And I remember the first day that I went earthing, it was free. I had no product, no service, no mm. subscription, no money paid. Right. I simply took my shoes off, put them in the dirt, and not instantly, but within an hour, I started to feel some relief. Yeah. Yeah. And then I started grounding every night. Eventually, I went to... A, a, Clint and got some, I uh, paid for all of it. This is not, uh, this is not a sponsored sort of thing right here. Mm -hmm. um, we got a grounding mat for my bed. We're standing on grounding mats here in our studio right now that connect us back to the earth. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to have any products. Earthing's hundred percent free. I was in the ocean this weekend and how wonderful is that? Free mm -hmm. earthing. Mm -hmm. But what I noticed after a couple weeks, after six weeks, yep. my whole life had changed appreciably. And mm. what I noticed is that grounding didn't heal me. It's almost as though it was removing the things that were creating the disease exactly. in my life. Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, it's like in nature, and I spoke about the animals, in nature, health is your most natural state. Mm. Unhealth doesn't exist in nature because you're, it's going to take you out. Right. But, but anyhow... Um, what I have learned over the years, 23, I've been doing this for 23 years, uh, and mostly observational. I'm an observationist and I grew up in nature. So I kind of relate everything to the natural world. And um, that's my more my guide. But, but basically, <clears throat> all the research that we did really is about uh, removing, you know, grounding people to the earth who had autoimmune or inflammation related health disorders. And so what we, you know, they, they would have the flaring arthritic pain. So we ground them to the earth and the pain drains away 
and and their body returns to normal. So it's just cowboy logic. I grew up on a ranch, cowboy riding, chasing cows. But anyhow, um, it's cowboy logic in the sense it's just it's obvious. Uh, and so we've tried to put the science behind it. We have millions and millions of dollars worth of research, and and that was for the researchers for the FDA for everybody to understand and be able to, here's a body of evidence to help people understand what it's about. Mm. But the average person, it's about my, my life is so busy. I don't have time for any of this. If it works, I tell me about it. What do I have to do? Yeah. And if it works, I want two of them. But anyhow, it's really, it's about removing charge from the body and putting the body back in its most natural electrical state, mm -hmm. which is neutral with the earth. So that there, and then if there is any charge in the body, the free electrons from the earth will instantly neutralize it and maintain the internal uh, workings or the integrity of the electrical functioning of everything that goes on in the body. And everything in the body is electrical first, chemical second. Mm. Wow. Every, every cell, everything that goes on in the body, yeah. it's it's about electron. It's 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 electrical. That's that's amazing, no. Josh. When you first were telling me about grounding, yeah, I thought it was woo wooey. I thought it was a little hippie. Mm -hmm. I know I got long hair, but that doesn't mean I'm a hippie. <laughs> so, but I'm not adverse to that stuff. I, I try to hold space for these things, but I really expected, you know, uh, it to be similar to like the, the whole idea of like here, uh, use this crystal to like heal something. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it actually, it makes me wonder. Yes. Yes. I know exactly where you're going with this. <laughs> where am I going with it? It makes me wonder, like, some of these things I always thought were nonsense, how much of it is actually nonsense. Yeah, yeah. And then specifically with the crystals, I'm wondering if there's something with the crystals that take away, if there's certain crystals that take away, like, a negative charge. I don't I don't know, but it makes me think, like, maybe if there, if there is uh, any type of substance to these crystal claims, maybe it has something to do with yeah. the electricity in our body. I don't know. Maybe. Do you, does, How about there... we set that aside so we don't get too <laughs> woo-woo-y for this? Yeah. Because this is really about reconnecting ourselves with the earth. Mm. And there is, what I've learned over the last year, Clint, is there is nothing that is so radical about this. In fact, mm. it's aggressively simple. What we've done is radical by inadvertently, accidentally disconnecting ourselves from the earth. On the Maxwell episode this week, you talked about how you saw this group of tourists and they were all wearing the same white Nike shoes. And it, that was sort of your epiphany, like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe we've accidentally disconnected mm. from the earth. And that disconnection has led to a whole lot of suffering. Things like, well, you mentioned lupus, but even things like sleep apnea, yeah. jet lag, Lyme disease, um, nighttime frequent urination, especially yeah. for men. That used to be something I would wake up five yeah. times a night to pee, and now it's zero or mm. one time after grounding regularly. So as we are grounding, this leads me into Cam's question from Instagram. Uh, in fact, let's let's start there and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep unpacking. Who would benefit most from grounding? What are the most notable benefits? So I've experienced a lot of personal benefits. Reduction in inflammation seems to be the big one, right? Mm -hmm. Because the inflammation is what leads to everything else. Yes. Okay, the, the most important thing is if you have pain in your body, you have inflammation. If you are grounded to the earth, hard grounded to the earth and stayed there, then it would resolve the inflammation and you can't have inflammation when you're grounded. So that's the premise of grounding. Um, inflammation is something new. It's only been around, I mean, the concept of Describing information came around 204, so it's only been around 18 years. That's unbelievable. Yeah, when we were in high school, that. they weren't talking about inflammation? No. 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 Um, so I'm, did I, am I getting the question totally? Yeah. yeah, so who would benefit most from, okay. from earthing? I mean, Any, anybody, it seems, yeah. seems like anyone, yeah. but... Yeah, anyone who has pain in their body, but most importantly, women, uh, because women are more sensitive uh, to the things in the environment, maybe because of children and whatever, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but but they sense everything in their environment and it uh, it affects their sympathetic nervous system. So, and the sympathetic affects fight or flight and in very subtle ways. And so your body becomes filled with cortisol, which dampens in mm -hmm. uh, the parasympathetic and so on. And, and so that creates anxiety, irritability, pain, and so on. Yeah. So, but everybody is affected equally, I think. But women are the ones who are, you know, put it this way, 90% of the visits to a practitioner for female. 
80, 90 percent of all nutraceuticals or pharmaceuticals are female. Mm. Men don't do anything, no pain, no gain until you have your first heart attack. You don't take any of this serious. Mm, yeah. yeah, right. And so what we're doing right now through a lot of our so-called solutions, we're actually creating more problems by not addressing the root of our pain, the root of our illness, the root of our dis-ease. Right. And what grounding, what reconnecting with the earth does, it helps us create the electrical charge, uh, neutral charge in our body so that we have the opportunity to heal. Yes. Yeah, it's, um, it's about restoring the body to normal. In nature, I mean, throughout all time, we were naturally grounded to the earth. Mm. And our bodies were always had a negative charge. So we have an immune system that evolved that uh, operated with reactive oxygen species, which are electrically charged molecules. Never an issue, not a problem as long as you're grounded. Mm. You know, because you have excess free electrons to mop up and prevent any collateral damage from the free radicals. Mm. But when you lose your electron charge and your body's full of cortisol, your pH is off, which is another measure of electrical, and your, uh, you know, the radicals just start damaging cells, and so you end up with a chain reaction of the immune system trying to put out a fire that it itself is creating because it doesn't know that it's no longer grounded or it doesn't have the natural resources that it used to have in nature. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah, let's check in with our live stream. Thanks uh, to our patrons who are joining us live today. Do you have any questions, Malabama? We have a question from Anita. Do you have any grounding tips for people in electric wheelchairs? I get static electric shocks when I touch my grounded appliances at home after I've moved around in my wheelchair. Right. Yeah, the, the wheelchair would have rubber tires like rubber shoes. Mm-hmm. You move around, you have contact and separation, so she would be building a, a huge electrical charge. Um, so there's a couple of simple ways to do it. Um, one is to get a grounding mat or something that's grounded a patch or, but, but very simply you can, um, um, I, I don't want to get too technical, but you can just take a piece of metal tape and wrap it around, you know, the tire, not the whole tire, just somewhere you know, on the wheel of the wheelchair. And then as it touches the carpet, it'll kind of equalize and discharge about 95% of the static charge. But the main thing is grounding reduces and prevents those charges in the first place. To have that on your body while you're sitting and moving, whatever, that's um, perturbing the sympathetic nervous system. I mean, it's, it's stress. There's an environmental stressor. So a mat might be good. You know, I'm not sure... Uh, exactly how to touch, but go touch a, a cold water pipe or a, the cold water faucet or touch the um, um, stainless steel sink or touch the stove that has metal. I mean, there's many ways to do this, mm. to dissipate this charge, but she doesn't want the spark. Mm. Well, the spark is, um, you have to go back and figure out the cause, what's causing it. You're building this charge on your body. You need to find a way to dissipate it. Uh, along the way, rather than let it build up to the point that you have five, 6,000 volts, yeah. which is what it takes to create that spark. And, and it could be also, there are plenty of other opportunities to to ground either. Yeah. So if you're stationary in a wheelchair, yes, right? Or if you're even just stationary at a desk, mm. yes. like, uh, and you're sitting there, you can have some sort of grounding mat that plugs into the ground yeah. of the wall yeah. and, uh, and, and you can eliminate that static that way. Yeah. But also when you're sleeping at night, you're going to be sleeping somewhere, usually in a bed and you can use a grounding mat there to, to ground yourself yeah. for, you know, we spend more time in bed than just about anywhere else. And it's right. the, it's the one time where we can assure that we are staying grounded. Right. Yeah, and the main thing in bed, you're sleeping on a foam mattress, all mattresses have foam, mm. and then you have dissimilar fabrics, meaning polyester mattress ticking. And then Hopefully you have cotton sheets because they they don't store the static. Mm. But if you have polyester in your sheets and your blankets, then there's going to be static. So you're sleeping in static Mm. and you need to get rid of that because it's unnatural to have the body charged with static electricity, especially high voltage. And and people are unaware of it. Yeah. Uh, They do have those things you throw in the washer and dryer. Oh yeah. Like the dryer sheets. Yeah. The dryer sheets to help reduce static electricity. Yeah. Yeah. It's in, yeah, it's like we, it's there 
Uh, and the only way we notice it is through things like inflammation, but we can't connect it no. with the, uh, the buildup of no. electricity. Yeah, that's yeah. the only way. Yeah. Clint, you were talking about that on the, the Maximal episode, which we already recorded, but you were getting into your story and you realized that as you started grounding, some of the pain was gone. And that was just like a really nice byproduct for you. For me and for a lot of people, they're seeking out the end of suffering, the reduction of pain. Mm -hmm. For you, it was like, oh, wow, this is an amazing benefit, especially with the people you started working with. Yeah, I, I started out uh, thinking that it improved sleep because I could measure things and see things. But most of all, I, I, I went to sleep easier and I slept better and longer. Um, <clears throat> but a few days later, uh, I recognized via the help of one of my friends bringing it to my attention that most of my chronic pain had resolved. I, I didn't have, I, I, and to explain that, I grew up on a ranch uh, and I was a cowboy. And, I'm, you know, they're crazy people. They ride they ride steers just for the weekend to entertain themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but I skied for maybe 30, over 30 years. I played tennis. I've had every injury you can think of. I've had surgeries. I've had, and, and at, at 49, 50, when I started to, 54, when I started to uh, understand all of this, my body was full of pain. Mm. I mean, I lived in pain. Mm. And I would go outdoors sometimes and look up at the sky and say, God, why did you make my body with so much pain on it? Mm. And then I realized he didn't later. <laughs> but, yeah. but anyhow, um, yeah, so the thing I learned most of all as a byproduct that after I stopped grounded for a few nights, that my pain went away. And I didn't even know it went away because you don't remember pain. If, you can't remember pain when it goes away. Mm -hmm. It's just not possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any stories that really stand out to you of people who have been helped immediately and uh, who've been suffering for a long time? Uh, yes. Any any stories that really stand out? Yes, we were doing a study up in uh, San Francisco area, and we had uh, half a dozen people that we were doing. Uh, in fact, it's in the book. There's pictures of it, uh, thermal imaging, so we could... Uh, <clears throat> set up a thermal camera and see the inflammation in the body, then ground the bottom of the foot or whatever for 30, 40 minutes, and then, you know, retake the thermal image or just take a video of the thermal imaging so we could see the color change, you know, over the half hour. Mm -hmm. So, but this one lady had been, um, had a knee injury and she had had it for about 30 years and in a small limp. And 30 minutes after grounding her, the pain went away. And several months after that, that she indicated that the pain never came back. Wow. So what happened was there was a pocket of inflammation in the body that was walled off. That's how the body does that to protect the rest of the body. And it was oxidizing and degenerating um, uh, tissue and so on. And then as soon as you got grounded, put the fire out, then the immune system could go immediately clean it up. But I've seen people have dramatic... Uh, results in five minutes, mm. life-changing results in five minutes. I have seen uh, things that I can't really get into sometimes because of the nature of them, because they're so um, sensitive to certain people, like especially women. And <clears throat> but it's it's just remarkable. It's uh, again when people are in pain, <laughs> you know, um, and then all of a sudden. They get out of pain, and a few days later, oh, I didn't know. I, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you you incredible. do remember the the suffering. It's hard; you can't replicate it in your mind, no, but no. you you can remember your lowest points when you were in excruciating pain, and I, yeah. I can certainly remember that. Mm. But it feels so distant to me yeah. now since I've been grounding consistently every day. Let's talk about some of the best ways to go grounding. It's absolutely free to, yeah. to go grounding. Uh, for me, I walk to the studio quite frequently. I walk through people's yards. It's about a 30 minute walk and I'll just walk on some grass or even some concrete. It can be okay if it's you know, on the earth there. And um, especially if it's like a slightly damp or your feet are a little damp, but can you talk about some of the best places to go sure. grounding? Yeah, sure. The, the, for 20 years, I've been trying to educate as many people as I can about grounding. The number one thing I tell them, I said, don't run out and go crazy about anything. Just go outdoors, take a chair into your backyard or in, on your patio, your concrete patio, mm -hmm. and take your shoes off and put your bare feet on the earth and just sit there for 30 minutes mm. and notice what happens in your body. 
you're going to have a reduction of pain. You're going to feel better. Your demeanor is going to change. Your, uh, your color is going to come back. Your circulation is going to improve. That brings your color back. But most of all, the pain and the anxiety, irritability and stress and the anger that's in your body, it all dissipates and disappears. Mm-hmm. You can't be mad at somebody if you're sitting outdoors, mm-hmm. you know, grounded to the earth. I mean, all that goes away. Um, <clears throat> so, but anyhow, the, the most, the simplest thing to do is to go outdoors and experiment. And that's what everybody tells me after they see the Earthing movie. The first thing I do is go outdoors and and see if this is true. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We'll put a link to the Earthing movie in the show notes, by the way, if you want to check it out. It's free to watch on YouTube, and it's also, thankfully, commercial-free. Yeah, it is commercial-free. And then we have a little 15-minute preview of it that, uh, I don't know, I think they call it The Grounded, but... um, down to earth is what it's called. Anyhow, that one was seen by 60 million people and we never advertised it. It was mm. just word of mouth. People wanted to share. I share it with people all the time. I buy this book by the case and <laughs> hand it out to friends and family. Yeah. And this is like the third or fourth copy of mine that I've owned. You see all the underlines in it, but I, I what happens is someone will say, I'm really in pain. I'm like, here, you got to check this out. You, yeah. You, yeah. you have to reconnect with the earth if mm-hmm. you want to end that suffering. Right. Yeah. So the, the next thing would be to, um, you know, go for a walk in the park barefoot, Mm -hmm. uh, go to the beach, any of those nature things, natural things. Think echotherapy. I want to get back in nature. Mm -hmm. Uh, So anything that has a nature flair to it uh, is usually grounded. I mean, here you can walk on the concrete. It's perfectly grounded because the humidity there's moisture, concrete holds moisture, the humidity, and then, of course, the rain and so on. There's a high uh, conductivity level in concrete. But asphalt won't be because no, of asphalt the... won't be. So things you can't do, carpets, um, glass tile floors or baked tile floors, um, the imitation woods or the plastics, all the flooring in our homes generally is not conductive. Yeah. And that's what happens. That's why it creates that static charge on our body. Mm. Right. Um, But the best things to do are just find a little space in nature. Create your own little sandbox if you have to, Mm -hmm. where you can go and after work, sit and put your feet in the earth for 30 minutes and drain the pain. Drain. uh, You're not really draining it, but what's happening, electrons are coming from the earth and they're putting out the fire, but it's the same concept. Um, So catch your cold water faucets, take take a bath. You know, especially if you have a home that was built before, you know, all the plastic piping and everything came along, mm-hmm. uh, your bathtub would be grounded because of the piping and the cold water is always grounded to the earth. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't really know. You kind of have to experiment. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the main thing is just touch earth, um, barefoot on the earth, mm. no matter where it is, no matter what it is, whether it's pretty earth, grass earth, flowered earth or dirt. It's all the same. It's electrical. <laughs> I mean, it conducts an electrical. Mm. It's it's you know it's equal around the it's around the globe. Mm. And electro and and ground travels. I mean, at speed of light. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's fast. It's not something you're going to eat and a pill is going to take an effect. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is instant, like flipping a switch. Mm. And, and the healing also has to do with the dosage, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Unlike uh, taking a pill, we're not covering something up. But if you're earthing every day for multiple hours a day, whether it's yeah on a pad at night or you're walking on the beach every day or just through yards, if you're reconnecting with the earth, you're going to experience more of those those benefits. Yeah. yeah. Earthing is cumulative. In nature, like the animals, you'd be grounded 24-7 and you couldn't have any of these modern degenerative health disorders. They just don't exist. Yeah. But in, so what I try to tell people is any amount of grounding is good and more is better. But if you have pain in your body, you have to get grounded and stay grounded until it goes away yeah. because your body's on fire and it's creating mm-hmm. you know, you know, cellular tissue damage and so mm-hmm. on. But <clears throat> the more you ground, you put the fire out for even just a short period and the inflammation will come back and then you ground more. But there is a cumulative effect. Yes. So over a period of months, then your body is going to be healthier and the inflammation isn't going to be so out of control. And, you know, there are environmental stresses out there like dust or pollution and, you know, lots of craziness, but you have to, it's about your immune system. You want to ground and put the fire out so your immune system can clean up that damage and then go back to maintaining and sustaining health. We don't realize it, but all of these autoimmune conditions that people have, uh, Crohn's disease, Mm -hmm. 
ulcerative colitis, rheumatoid arthritis, MS, et cetera, et cetera. I could give you a whole list. Yeah, there's 85 of them. Oh, wow. And, and so <laughs> those are all inflammation related. Yes. So what inflammation means is a real, it's really an autoimmune um, disorder. Mm. Inflammation is a byproduct. Mm. You know? So the immune system is misfiring. I mean, it's, it's sending a, a white blood cell to uh, reduce a pathogen or a damaged cell. And in the process, it's creating reactive oxygen species. Uh, and there's no ground to reduce any excess. And so the excess radicals are ripping electrons from healthy tissue. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like burning a log. The log is on fire. So the immune system is sending, you know, firepower, the neutrophils or you know, cytokines or whatever, uh, to reduce and prevent damage. But because it doesn't have enough ground or enough free electrons in the body, enough redox potential, mm -hmm. uh, or your pH is way off, or throws the pH off. So if you don't have enough ground, it's a terrible word, <laughs> but if you don't have enough Earth's free electrons or Earth's um, electrical stability, you know, whatever, negative, negative charge. Anyhow, then um, you're going to have inflammation. So it's, it's really um, just get grounded. Let, you know, the body abs absorbs these free electrons. Mm -hmm. uh, they saturate the body, they saturate the tissue. The red blood cells become negatively charged. And, you know, you can't have inflammation. I don't know if I got off track there. You have to bring it <clears throat> Well, back. I'll tell you, 13 months ago, I would wake up in the morning. My ankles, especially if I had eaten something that had triggered yes. a, you know, some sort of inflammation, a mm. nightshade, vegetable, mm. for example. Yep. I would wake up in the morning with 9 out of 10 pain in my ankles, especially. It felt exactly. like someone rolled my ankles. Yep. Mm. I used to play basketball. When you roll your ankle, you have an acute injury and there's inflammation yeah. there, but it felt like that most mornings for me. Yeah. It doesn't feel like that ever now with right. grounding mm. because I've removed uh, that that inflammation from my body. Yeah. yeah. Well, what you've done is you've flooded with the body with free electrons right. from mm. the earth. And so inflammation can't exist. It can't manifest when your body's grounded. Mm. Ryan, what time is it? You know what time it is. It's time for the lightning round where we uh -oh. answer your text messages. You can text your questions, your comments, your smart remarks to area code 937-202-4654. Yes, indeed. Those texts actually go to both of our phones. I'd love to hear for folks who have tried grounding. What are some of your uh, subjective experiences that you've had? By the way, if you uh, text us, you also get on our Monday morning minimal maxims. Each Monday, we just send out a text message. No advertisers, no junk, no spam. We start your week off with a little bit of simple living. And so, Clint, what we try to do is we answer these questions with short, shareable, less than 140 character response, but not okay. really. We ramble on a bit. <laughs> and then podcast Sean, he makes it look beautiful in the show notes yeah. so okay. people can copy and share our pithy answers on social media if they'd like. Malabama, it looks like uh, Sarah has a question for us. If grounding is so beneficial, why doesn't mainstream medicine discuss it more often? Now, Ryan, when you first read this question, what did you think it said? I thought it said mainstream media. And then I get <laughs> I, I send Josh my pithy answers so he can like uh, polish them up for me and make them nice and beautiful for the show. And he sent it back and he was like, the, the question doesn't say anything about mainstream media. <laughs> and then I look at the question again and still saw mainstream media. I'm like, yes, it does. And then after like a fourth time reading, I was like, oh, it's mainstream medicine. But there are some similarities between the two. <laughs> Expand on that, Clint, because you said okay. the same thing. <clears throat> okay, I, you know, I have, we have a lot of doctors who use earthing products. Yes. And <clears throat> we have one that I refer to because he was one of the first ones I ran into, cardiologist, and there's like three or four cardiologists in this, in this group. And they kept ordering what we call a recovery bag. And one day he ordered some and I said, you know, I'm going to be driving by in, down in Encinitas. And I said, I'd like to drop them off for you and, and just meet you. And so I did and ran to the office and said, gave them to him. And I said, what do you do with these things? And he says, oh, we use them for our staff to stay off the hypertension meds. And I said, okay. <laughs> I didn't know too much about yeah, any of that at the time. And um, <clears throat> then I said, well, why don't you give these to your clients and to your people? And he said, oh, well. he put his hand on my shoulder and he says, son, he said, he pointed at the door and he said, every time somebody walks through that door, they're worth X number of dollars for testing. Mm. Now, don't take this wrong. This is not attacking docs. Mm. This, is, this is a statement about our times and our yes, culture. Yeah. 
<clears throat> but anyhow, he said, every time somebody walks through that door, he said, first of all, I'm going to run tests and, and, you know, it's worth some large amount yeah. of money. Yeah. Then if I don't give them script, they're going to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And they're my cable system. I need those people to come back every so many months because that's how, yeah. you know, I make my living and so on. But anyhow, the point of that was not to knock doctors at all. What it is, is like he said, I'm married to a woman who's married to a doctor that wants to live like a woman who's married to a doctor. <laughs> okay, that's part of it, mm. meaning she spends money. And I'm not picking on women here at all. But um, <clears throat> beyond that, I've got all the staff. Uh -huh. I've got this building. Yeah. I got lights. I have, um, you know, lots of overhead. Yeah, yeah. I'm still paying for school, you know, 12, 15 years of medical school. Oh, my goodness. Right. Yeah. And so this is a business. Mm. Yes. And it's a business taking care of people. These people aren't grounded. They're not going to get grounded in mm -hmm. their words. Mm -hmm. uh, they just want palliative care, meaning things to help them cope with their health disorder mm. and, and make it to wherever. And there's a whole big crop coming right behind them. Yeah. So this is a business. Shit. So you're nobody's going to stop doing what they do because there's no money in grounding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't tell somebody to go home and get well for free. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. so, yeah. So that's one huge piece of it. Right. And then yeah. also Josh was talking about how like your doctor wouldn't bring it up because he said he didn't want to lose credibility. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Because in the... And he's a functional medicine doctor. He does a lot of things that are sort of outside the the conventional mainstream narrative. But and he, we had tried a bunch of unconventional things. And then when I stumbled across Earthing, I realized, well, wait a minute. I went to talk to the doctor about it. And he was like, I'm just ashamed I didn't tell you about this sooner. Because <laughs> I, I felt like you wouldn't have believed me. And the truth is, I may not have. That's right. Yeah. Because of the very first question you were asked by Tanya was, mm -hmm. how do I explain this to people without it sounding hippie or woo-woo or, or uh, spiritual or whatever? Yeah. It's like the way that we explain it is it's reconnecting to our ancestors because for hundreds of thousands of years, we and all other living beings have been connected to earth. Mm -hmm. We recently disconnected ourselves yeah. and along with that disconnection has come dis-ease. Yeah. Fire. Mm, yeah, yeah. we are on fire. Well, here's a pithy answer for you. The truth is the truth regardless of our beliefs. So that's really a roundabout way to address Sarah's yeah. question here. Yes, maybe your mainstream doctor doesn't know about the truth. That's part of it. A lot of them don't. They know what they know. They, 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 yeah, and they've specialized in that. And then also... It, like in a place like California, for example, if you're a cancer doctor, if you're an oncologist mm -hmm. you, and you try to treat cancer outside of basically chemotherapy or radiation, you are they remove your medical license. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so you, as a doctor, you also have to be careful that you're stepping outside the bounds of the, the law that you have. You may not be able to help people with unconventional treatments in a legal way because of the restrictions that are put in place yeah. for your industry. Mm. Yeah. And th there's a reason for all of that. There, there has to be a standard protocol yes. that everybody can work with. And hopefully they advance that. And you have the institutions, the medical, I mean, the uh, universities, you have all of those. Everybody's working and trying to improve drugs and improve medical equipment and protocols. Mm. Um, but the problem is they're oblivious to the effects of grounding the, the, it's an environmental health disorder. We, uh, we've changed our bio terrain. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, it's, but most people aren't aware of that. And doctors can't get into you, into your, uh, your lifestyle mm -hmm. and what you eat and what you think, because all these things are contributing to this inflammation. And um, so all they can do is help you cope with what you are presenting. They have a computer. <laughs> Okay, it's okay to give you this. It's okay to give you that. Mm -hmm. And it's just the way it is today. Yes. And it's going to change. And it's going to be moms with autistic children and mothers who that they're taking care of that are in, in, with debilitating arthritis and various other things. It's going to be these young moms who are going to change the world. Yeah, and I, I, because when you start to see pain relief for you or for the people you love, now you're eager because it's added value to your life right. in some way. You're eager to share that with other people. That's why yeah. I, th I've i bought more copies of this book, I think, than any other <laughs> book. This and the Total Money Makeover, those two things. Mm -hmm. Life-changing. I've, I've uh, just handed them out like you know candy, except it's much healthier yeah. for you. Mm. Yeah. Ryan, you got something pithy for us? Yeah, so the pithy answer that I, that I sent Josh and uh, uh, yeah. 
It said this, mainstream media prioritizes your attention over your well-being. So mainstream media prioritizes your attention over your well-being. And the same thing could be said with mainstream medicine. Mm. They want your time. They want your money. Mm -hmm. um, yes, they'll give you some things to, to cure some ailments, mm -hmm. um, but they are prioritizing uh, uh, things before your well-being, for sure. And it doesn't mean that doctors don't want to help you, but right. as Clint elucidated here, you, there are other factors involved. Yeah. You know, I, I, I would, if it weren't for doctors, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, of course. Yes. <laughs> and, and so I, I have a high respect for those who are on point and doing, Absolutely. doing the right things yes. and have the right principles. Mm -hmm. But to a large degree, America, capitalism, not just America, the world, uh, but capitalism and, you know, money you know, the Wall Street and all of these things, mm -hmm. it's all about making money. Yeah. And pharmaceuticals and drug companies, they're all about making money. Insurance companies are public. They have to create more revenue to increase shareholder value. Mm -hmm. So they have to forever raise prices yes. and, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. but, but it goes on and on. But we live in a society where money is at the bottom. It's the driving force mm -hmm. behind everything. Yeah. So advertising, media, whatever, media, uh, they'll take a controversial history and get on one side or the other just mm -hmm. so they can get eyeballs because they get they make money by the amount of eyeballs that are watching their program. Yeah. We, we get so much pressure yeah. to do advertisements on our podcast. And it isn't a moral stance. I just mm. think that advertisements are, are gross. Yeah. And so I'm really thankful for our Patreon supporters because they keep the podcast mm. advertisement free, even for mm. the people who don't pay to get, you know, we do two episodes every week. We do a minimal yep. episode, a maximal episode. Mm -hmm. The maximal episode is a deeper dive. We could talk about some things there. Like Clint told his whole story, 40 minutes of him living in Montana and connecting with Native Americans. Oh, yeah. And we we're really, really able to dive deep there, but it's Heck thanks yeah. to our Patreon supporters, not thanks to, you know, this episode brought to you by <laughs> Pfizer, right? Exactly. It's brought to you by Big Mac. <laughs> and here's, here's the thing, because you, you mentioned the financial responsibility, but it's even illegal to not put money first because these companies have a yeah. fiduciary responsibility exactly. yeah. to yeah. give money back to their shareholders. And so <sighs> how you can't have a fiduciary responsibility and then also recommend earthing. Yeah. No, or, you know, or, or you can't be a benevolent, caring human yeah. being. Yeah. You have to look everything about money. Uh, I have uh, my oldest daughter, uh, her husband went through med school. He uh, radiolo runs a radiology department for the Mayo Clinic. And when he started out, he wanted to be a, a naturopath and he wanted to be helping. And, and you know, you know, like most doctors, I believe, when yeah, they start, yeah. they want to be humanitarian. So, yes. But as time went on, it turned into money. So all of a sudden, his life is not about <laughs> what he had in his dream when he went to college. Yes. It's about you know, making money for the institution. And there's nothing, I mean, that's the way it is. You can't yeah. say it's good or bad or whatever. It is the way it is. We have built a system, we're locked into it, but the only way it can change is moms. Mm. There's no, mm. nobody else is going to change it. I, I can tell mm. you my wife is, and she is so healthy, but even her, you know, she would never, she doesn't have any chronic pain or anything right. like that. But as a 40 year old woman, uh, she was 38 when we started grounding she started experiencing better sleep. Yeah. Marginally improved at first and then uh, improved appreciably. And mm. then her nervous system calmed down the right. chaos. My seven-year-old daughter, her nervous system calmed down. Right. She was less sensitive to mm. lights and loud noises. Exactly. And yeah. all from reconnecting with the earth. From yeah. grounding out the stress in your body. <laughs> oh, man. Grounding out the cortisol. Yeah. Well, real quick for right here, right now, here's one thing that's going on in the life of the minimalist. I know we mentioned Patreon earlier, but this week we're putting up the fifth and final studio tour, although I don't think it's going to be the final because we're getting ready to make a whole change in the studio. Yeah, so it'll be the fifth and final part of season one of the studio tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we got five different studio tours up there right now. Patreon.com slash the minimalist. That's for the true fan tier and the VIPs. Alabama, what else you got for us? Here are some voicemail comments and insights from our listeners. Hey, Josh and Ryan. It's, uh, Brad in New York here. I have suggestions for people trying to get rid of items. It doesn't necessarily have to be a physical object. Deleting superfluous apps from your phone can count too. Digital clutter is still clutter. 
Hey guys, my name is Justin, and I'm calling from Columbus, Ohio. Hopefully you guys are aware in your home home state of Ohio that the opioid uh, prescription crisis uh, is at an all-time high uh, when it comes to the abuse and misuse of prescription medication. And one of the things that's been developed through the Ohio State University is a program called Generation Rx. And one of the key takeaways uh, is educating the public about um, the proper use of prescription uh, medication as well as the proper disposal. Um, as I've been listening to your guys' podcast and, and learning about some of the principles that you guys are teaching on it, it can be applied to uh, as a potential solution um, for this crisis. And um, by applying the um, simplifying and minimalizing your drug cabinet or your medicine cabinet uh, and going through and properly disposing of uh, prescription medications that aren't uh, being used because one out of four people that uh, misuse or abuse a prescription drug got them from a family member or friend. And a lot of times that's just uh, prescription drugs that are hanging out in the medicine cabinet you know, that can be uh, minimized when they're no longer needed. All right, y'all, before we wrap up and get to our added value segment, I want to thank Clint Ober for being here today. And we just want to acknowledge you for writing this book, yeah. Earthing, the most important health discovery ever. If folks want to check it out, we'll put a link to the book in the show notes. We'll also put a link to your film, which is available to watch for free on YouTube and commercial free. And then also they can check out earthing.com. In fact, that's our added value this week. All of the products that you sell... Although we you were stumbled into this. People were begging you. And in fact, yeah. I would be the first person to beg you for this because yeah. the grounding mat that I have on my bed totally changed my life. Yeah. It means every night I'm grounding for eight hours. Mm. The grounding mats we're standing on right now, we didn't get them for free. Ryan and I paid for these yeah. grounding mats. And um, all of your other products that you offer at earthing.com is because there was a strong demand. Right. I will say this, though. You don't need any product to go earthing. No. Amen. You no. can do it for free, and you have the heart of a servant. You're trying to help people, educate people, and that's what really all of this is about. And I'm so grateful you decided to join us today. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Clint. Uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity to share with your people. If you uh, want to connect with all the science as well, Clint runs the Earthing Institute. You can find it at earthinginstitute.net. We'll put a link to all of that in the show notes. By the way, we got a bunch more surprise questions this week, like in what ways are man-made EMFs harming us? Can we ground while wearing socks? Can we ground on concrete? How does grounding relate to PEMF therapy, infrared saunas, and other alternative healing practices, plus a million more questions for Clint Ober and The Minimalists. And if you want to hear all that, check out The Minimalist Private Podcast this week. Visit patreon.com slash The Minimalists to subscribe and get your personal link so that our weekly private podcast plays in your favorite podcast app. You also gain immediate access to hundreds of hours of private archives, recordings of live events, exclusive home tours, and our private community of thousands of open minded minimizers like you. You can follow The Minimalists on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The Minimalists. If you want our podcast show notes are in your inbox, sign up for our email list over at theminimalists.com. On behalf of Ryan Nicodemus, Podcast Sean, Malabama, Jordan No More, Social Jess, Danny Unknown, Post Production Peter, Emma the Immigrant, and the rest of our team, I'm Joshua Fields Milburn. If you leave here today with just one message, let it be this. Love people, and use things because the opposite never works. Thanks for listening, y'all. We'll see you next time. Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing that's just feeding your greed Oh, I bet that you'd be fine without it